The following presentation has been closed captioned. Welcome to Walt Disney World Inside Out. The weekly show that keeps you up to date and takes you behind the scenes at Walt Disney World. MGM Studios at Walt Disney World in Florida. Please welcome Brian Leary and J.D. Roth. I'm the sensational J.D. Ross. <laughs> oh, great. That would make me the uh, fabulous Brian Leary, wouldn't right. it? And we'd like to thank the Extraordinary Screen Extras Band. Woo! Hey! They're great, aren't they? Huh? You love them? Hey! See, we're hyping ourselves Hollywood style because we're coming to you from the Disney MGM Studios. Yep, and in keeping with our Hollywood theme, we've got a thrilling, magnificent, spellbinding, non-stop, e-ticket thrill ride of a show for you today. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be taking a meeting at the Disney Institute, where things always seem to be amazing over there. And the man who needs no hype at all, our co-host, Mr. George Foreman, the champ, will be at the Disney World Central Shop, learning how they build all the fantastic Disney attractions. As magical as Walt Disney World may be, you can bet it takes a lot of human behind-the-scenes magic to come up with new attractions and keep the old favorites in tip-top condition. Say you want to ride for your theme park. You can't just go over to Kmart and pick one up on sale. You got to think it up. You got to design it. And you've got to build it. This is Disney World Central Shop, where all the building gets done. <laughs> This hey, is George, welcome to the Central Shops. Bill Higgins, hey, now how big is this place? Uh, we've got 450,000 square feet. We've got over 500 people here, and they're from all the different trades you can imagine. We have machinists, and we have welders, electricians, painters, staff craft workers, laborers, engineers. So the nice thing about this is it's all under one roof, and so we can just about do anything in this building from getting a piece of raw material and then getting out a finished product. So that's what's really great about us, I think. Oh, and make a lot of people smile, make a lot of people happy. That's right. That's exactly right. Where are we going? Well, this is a bull elephant for the Jungle River Cruise here at Walt Disney World. Boy, you guys, what does it take and how long does it take to repair something like this? Well, we got about a month's work in it to put it all oh, back what? into uh, good working order to put back into the show. Well, that's pretty good, huh? Yeah. yeah. There, Stan, oh, thanks. I get a chance to help out here. Oh, sure, we're just adjusting all the linkages for the trunk movement. Oh, yeah. Put it in that like so. Yeah. Okay, George, we're going to put this new hydraulic line in to feed our hydraulics for our hydraulic system. Okay. How about that? George Foreman helped to save the elephant. <laughs> yeah. We're getting ready to go outside into our dry dock area where we can bring the boats, the river boats and the ferry boats. This is the Richard Irvine. We lift it out of the water with four big, huge electric lifts that are down by the lake and bring it up back on the railroad tracks where we refurbish it. It's amazing that something like that can be pulled out of the water. We're going into the uh, fiberglass shop where we do fiberglass and plastics work. See the uh, green army man boots over here from the parade? That's where we make them. 
this lady is uh, working on some coral for the Seas Pavilion. Boy, is that beautiful. She's using a very special kind of paint that uh -huh. will not harm the fish that are in the attraction in the Seas Pavilion at Epcot Center. Oh. Over here is our sign shop where we do all the graphics and uh, sign work for the parks. There are so many signs at Walt Disney World. It takes 27 painters working full time just to make sure that you don't walk into the wrong bathrooms. <laughs> Here's one of the Main Street vehicles. Main Street vehicle. Here's the Dumbo Elephant. It's just recently been painted and getting ready to go back out. There are some of the horses now. Some unpainted and then some painted. That's from the carousel. And look, an alligator. Now that's a Florida special there. Mm -hmm. Getting ready yeah. to get it rehabbed. With all the alligators in Florida, you wouldn't think that you needed a, to paint one and make one, huh? And getting ready to go into the weld shop now. This is where we weld metal together, do all the metal fabrication work. This has been wonderful. There's more that goes on behind the scene than anyone can ever imagine. But it never ends. There's always something, I guess, to be repaired, to be redone. There you go. Oh, Thanks a lot. There, there you go. I'm putting in overtime. Yeah. Think about it. The dolls at It's a Small World. The presidents at the Hall of Presidents. And the pirates at the Pirates of the Caribbean. Now they don't just move around because they feel like it. They do it because they're programmed to do it. And right now, Brian is in a secret room underneath the Magic Kingdom to find out how it all works. This is the Digital Animation Control System. DAX, for those of us who are computer literate. Actually, down here is where all the brains are for all the audio animatronic characters up there. Now, I don't know what any of this stuff does, but I'm just, I'm just dying to press this button and see if I can't get President Lincoln to do staying alive. What do you think? What exactly is all this stuff? This is the console in DAX. This is where all the maintenance calls come from. This is where we monitor all our show information. That's why we call it the heartbeat of the Magic Kingdom. Wow, so this is a heartbeat. So where's the liver? In the back part of the room. Oh, very good. But we can control and see it all down here. So oh. please don't touch anything. Like what? Don't touch this? No. Or this? No. Are you making a little nervous? Yes. So here we come up to our show control unit. This is, this is small world. Audio, yes. It's a world of laughter, a world of... This exactly, is like, yes. Hey, very good. This is the tiki room. This is tiki. This is the one where the birds sing. Like, how? Let's all sing like the birdies sing. Tweet, 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 tweet. Okay, Vicky snapped. <laughs> this is the cabinet for Haunted Mansion. Oh. Mm -hmm. All the little sounds come off of what we call EEPROM. They're about three and a half seconds worth of information. These EEPROMs go oh. in this card, and we can put 16 of them, and then we slide them in here. So let's on. say I wanted to hear a graveyard dog whine. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is this? These are the animation consoles. Where's the fingers? Right there. <gasps> Very good. This is the original console that Bill Justice used. Bill Justice is the original animator of Chip and Dale. He took some time and did some artwork for us. So what, he was just doodling? Right, he was spending time in between actually programming the animals and he doodled for us. We went from this semi-stationary unit to a portable unit and now the animation is done through a laptop. And this is the animation board where we actually can make Mr. Lincoln do your staying alive. Now here's our parade monitor and parade console. This is where the Mickey Mania Parade comes from and Spectro Magic. Parade people can watch it coming up and down Main Street. So they can see if there's any problems, too. Correct. There's sensors in the road to pick up oh, the parade. Great. They can also remind people that we do have floats on the street. This was really incredible. Thanks, Vicki. Thanks, Brand. You're welcome. This week at Epcot, Country Showdown. Six aspiring music acts from across the nation compete in a talent contest at the American Garden stage.
Main Street USA at the Magic Kingdom is just like being in a small town anywhere. You know everyone. Hey, Elaine, those nuts smell great. Hang it in, hanging in. Hey, Mommy. Oh, it feels good today. Now, how's that little one? Hello, Brian. Brian. I get the blues when my baby left me by the San Francisco Bay. Yeah, man. She took an ocean liner and she gone so far away. Oh, well, I didn't mean to treat her so bad. She does the best of pal that I ever had. She said goodbye, gonna make me cry. I'm gonna lay me down and die. If she don't come back, I think I'm gonna lose my mind. Well, if she ever comes back to stay, there's gonna be another brand new day. Walking with my baby down by the San Francisco Bay. Well, meanwhile, in another city, just about to go insane. Okay. Seems like... I heard my baby the way she used to call my name. Hey, stupid! If she ever comes back to stay, there's gonna be another brand new day. I'm walking with my baby down by the San Francisco Bay. I'm walking with my baby by the bay. San Francisco Bay. San Francisco Bay. MGM Studios and catch up with JD, who's about to learn some showbiz secrets on the backstage studio tour. So if you want to know how movies and TV shows are made, this is the place to go. You can see how they created a tidal wave in a tank of water. Or how they made kids look like they were flying on the back of a bumblebee in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. They're shooting a movie here. We're going to see it all happen. Are you excited? Good. I gotta find out how they do this. Megan, do you know how they do it? Well, we're gonna find out in one second. Let's go. All right, what's going on behind us? Well, what you're looking at is uh, out on the front side, we've got these series of towers and tanks that are up there on All right. big stilts. That shake and stuff. Right. So what you've got is a very long lever arm. And we have a series of counterweights here and a hydraulic cylinder that allows a small amount of movement on this end. But because you have such a long lever up there, it's translated into a great deal of movement out on the other side. Whoa, look at all the water coming Oh, yeah. Down. Well, the water's got to go someplace, and it, and it drains down through there and into this series of drains. That is a lot of water. How many gallons would you say just drop down? Uh, there are 70,000 gallons of water in the system. <laughs> so what happens to all the water when it comes down from the ride? Well, the water itself is collected in this reservoir that you see here. 
it's capable of holding about 100,000 gallons of water. Once the water collects in here, we've got a series of pumps, and those two pumps pump the water that's collected in this reservoir back up to holding tanks called weirs up in the upper end of the canyon and above the tram. There are also a series of water cannons, and these are, are large diameter pipes that are filled with water and then discharged with a big belt of compressed air. And that's what gives you that surge of wall of water coming at you. All right, the earthquake part, which is happening right now, you can see the tram going. Right. I love that part. How do you guys do that? Well, essentially, you've got those giant shaker tables. And these are, these are just big tables set on pivots, and you have large hydraulic rams that simply shake the thing back and forth. And so what we have is a simulation of a 6.3 earthquake. I love that. That is tremendous. So what I really want to know is, uh, how can I go on this ride one more time? Well, that's real easy. I mean, there it is right there. Just hurry up and get on. I just got to get on the tram? That's okay, right. thanks a lot. Sure right. thing. Take care. See ya. Have fun, all right? I'm going on a catastrophe can. Let's go over to the Disney Institute for a whole new vacation adventure in the heart of Disney World. You won't believe what you can do. Hi, it's me, Brian, here at the Disney Institute. I guess you're probably wondering why this is such an extreme close-up. That's a technical term. Because my arms aren't long enough. Everyone these days has a camcorder. And if you've seen a lot of your friends' home videos, you know that almost no one really knows how to use one. That's why I'm here at the Better Home Video Programs here at the Disney Institute. So why don't you grab your camcorder and um, come along? Oh. Oh. What we are doing is we're telling the story with pictures, and we're telling it in such a way that nobody throws up and that nobody gets bored. Now, everyone now in the United States and the world has a camcorder. So this was a... It's a great idea, but it's a real smart idea to do, to have a better home video class. Yes, what we decided to do was to teach them to be comfortable with the camera and know how to use it. Mm -hmm. We want to teach them some storytelling techniques, and then we want to give them a chance to go out and use some of the techniques we've taught them to make a video, come back and take a look at it. This assignment is no different from what you would get at Boston University uh, or at NYU as a first assignment. They'd give you uh, 100 feet of film, and they'd say, tell a story with a long shot, medium shot and a close-up. If we teach them some of the tricks the pros use, mm -hmm. then they can make their home videos a lot more fun and interesting to watch. Uh, in Notorious, Ingrid Bergman has a key that she's supposed to pass to Cary Grant, and she stands in the middle of a very, very crowded room. The camera goes all the way from the back of the set, all the way down, all the way right into, into her hand. Right? But it's a very motivated move, and it's a very powerful move. So motivated means, why, you know, why am I zooming? Ask yourself, why am I, am I zooming? Because it's cute and fun? Or am I zooming because it gets me into something that I want? Do they ask you questions on how to maybe photograph, well, their kids? One of the techniques that we like to share with them when taking videos of children is get down on the level of the children. Rather than shooting from, from above, you're going to get the top of their head. But they can learn some of the tricks that the pros use, the actual news videographers. Mm -hmm. And why not use them themselves to catch something that's happening? Call up the TV station, get their video on the air. Okay, okay, we're trying to do a home video here, guys. And five, four, three, two, action. Okay, now we just, okay, wide. Now come in close, come in close, come in close. Now I want you to tilt down, pan up, swish pop me out of the frame. Now then you have to... Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to tell you how to do your job, okay? You happy now? Very good. This month at Walt Disney World, November 14 through 17, Epcot presents the Walt Disney World Teddy Bear and Doll Collection, featuring collectors, dealers, and fans from across the country. Later this season, November 29th through December 31st, Epcot celebrates holidays around the world, featuring special entertainment and holiday illuminations. And also, November 29th through December 24th, the spectacular candlelight processional lights up the night at the American Gardens Theater. Well, Brian, we've done it again. Yep. We've turned Disney World inside out. And I'm exhausted. Really? <laughs> no. Actually, I want to thank our co-host, George Foreman, for showing us a part of Disney World that, you know, most people really never get a chance to see. Yeah, we'll see you next week, champ. I'll be there. You be there.
Okay, I'll be there, I'll be there. <laughs> now, you know, Bream, since we're here at Disney MGM Studios, I think there's only one way we could possibly end the show. What's that, babe? Like a big, gooey, phony kind of, you know, show busy goodbye? Yeah, you got it, babe. It is babe, isn't it? It is babe. Okay, let's go for the big air kiss. Okay. Okay. I love oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mean it. <laughs> uh, we'll do lunch with you guys next yeah, week, okay? Bye-bye. We'll bye. See you later. Bye-bye.